All right, welcome back everybody. Welcome back to the Morpha project and uh, today We're gonna work on the big giant tree again, and then uh, hopefully we can move up to uh, the rest of it So yeah That's uh, been some time Working on this bad boy, but uh, today I can do it and uh, I have successfully updated my uh, uh, Software so it is far more well supposed to be more responsive, so it should be all fine. As you can see, we're working now on this, and then we're going to be working towards getting this part up and running. So, first things first, we need to switch to our lovely thing. So, there you go. We now have the line. We should go for pencil, stroke, pencil 2. And we should go for this one right here, yes. Alright, let's see if I can get the preview. Yes, I can get the preview. Preview, nice, lovely. So what I'm gonna be doing now is actually moving up the tree. So I'm gonna be building up the tree towards the uh, part where I want it to be. So the big, big part upwards, and then we're gonna make, uh, we're gonna draw that, and then we're gonna give it some nice little colors. Or at least that's what I am thinking I'm gonna be doing. I could be wrong. I could be definitely wrong, but. That's the uh, that's the idea. So no no further ado, let's get started on this, shall we? Um, do 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 do. Let me get over here. Get this thing up and running like so. It's it's quite it's a quite an achievement to get all this stuff up and running. So it's it's quite an achievement. Don't mean get me wrong here. It's very hard to get all this stuff done properly. But we will try our very best to get our stuff where it needs to be. So the first thing first we need to do is actually getting the uh, lines here a little bit done. Drawing those nice lines. Getting that tree effect up and running. Probably making sure that all this stuff is quite strong. But the main issue here is that the tree does, well, you know, it, it, it does create this effect that I need to make sure that all, all of this is working um, correctly. The main issue I have with this thing is like, yeah, it, it is a lot of work. A lot of strokes that need to be drawn, and then once these strokes are done, then we'll, we will get to point B from there on. So yeah. It's already looking lovely. It's uh, just a little bit of issues right here and there. And I'm a little bit still exhausted from, uh, you know, getting the thumbnail up and running. <coughs> Apparently rushing something. Well, I did not rush it, but apparently working on it for way, way too, well, for way too long. Uh, yesterday did exhaust me today, but not as much as I, uh, not as much as I uh, thought it would be. So it's it's all fine. It's it's just you know it's just a little bit of a um, tiredness that is still running through my veins. But the good news is that we're actually working on a Malfa project and uh, we're doing quite well now because we're actually getting stuff done. Because we have now fully updated the thumbnail, we can now, we can now show the thumbnail, I still need to uh, register some, some of the work, I will do that probably tomorrow. But yeah, I need to, uh, need to keep on uh, getting the, the lovely roots up and running. Of course, these roots are quite hard to do because they're roots, and well, you have this whole damn thing that needs to be fixed. But the good news is that all of this is actually quite uh, working well. It seems that the uh, stream is actually actually uh, keeping up with the drawing, so that's all good. No delays, no um, problems with that. No problems with transferring data which it had in the past don't get me wrong there it had 
So since that is actually quite not an issue anymore, I am hoping now that the quality of the stream is also then, or well, has been majorly increased because of all the stuff that, um, all the quality stuff that is now far better. Of course, you know, you need to work on this like I always do, just casually getting things done. So now that we draw this part, we can now move from point A to point B and from point B to point C. That's how we do it. So as you can see, there is a big giant bark, uh, bark root here that is right over there. So we're going to implement that as well. Of course, we're going to make sure that this thing wobbles up towards the point where we want to be. And since that this is a part that we want to draw, I'm going to draw it like so. And this thing needs to be drawn in like it should be in drawn. So it's a big oaky boy. It's a big oaky boy with, uh, with a lot of markings on it. So that's what I'm going to go for. I'm going to be also going for another one right here. Apparently that is also a thing. An okie boy right now would be fine, I guess. Probably. I don't know for sure on this one, but it should be fine. That is. Mm. Yeah, probably it will be fine. All right. Now that we have drawn those parts, I just need to get my little wiper here to fix the problem that I had with the tablet. And I totally forgot I'm working in the dark. Well, let's see if this works. Pressing this button. You can do it. No? All right. One sec. Need to fix the uh, lighting. That's why you're never supposed to work in the dark. You're always supposed to work in in light. Otherwise, um, you don't realize when your eyes are overexhausting. And because your eyes are, because you don't know when your eyes are overexhausting, the uh, lighting will me will or oh well could cause the uh, could cause some major downsides in your eyesight. Which of course you don't want to have when you try to draw and you have like problems with your eyesight already. Well, I don't have problems with my eyesight. It's just one little mizzy little bit of down. It still needs me to wear glasses, but it's not that major of an issue. I just don't like... I could if I want to. I could go on for lenses, but nah. I'm not very fond of lenses. They... I don't know. The feeling of putting things into your eyes is an, on your eyes is a little bit strange. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Now we're at the point where we need to be. So we can just casually get this up and running. Like so. We do need to keep on to keep variety in the strokes that we lay down. And uh, the ma the main the main problem is if we don't do the variety in the in the, in the strokes, the things might get. There you go. Uh. No 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 no. Really? This is why I should definitely close my door, but I didn't. <laughs> All right. I'll close the door. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Close the door. Cheese Louise. These people. Getting horny and all. Oh well. Uh, let's see. So yeah, working on this, working on these strokes, we need to make sure that they are a little bit variety. So that uh, it doesn't look all the same. Oh, hey Space. You're far away from the microphone. Ah. Alright. 
Is this better? Is this better? Probably. Yeah. I didn't test my microphone today. Sorry, man. Don't. Sorry, man. People. Getting horny and all. Meh. Yep, there you go. It's far better. It's far better. So, yeah. Welcome, space. <laughs> Welcome, space junk. Welcome to uh, the Malfa project again. As you can see, I'm very busy with it. I'm very busy. And did I use all these same... Did I use the same... Hold on. Did I use the same... I used the same. Alright, good. Just had to double check if I did not... Uh, <laughs> went for a different approach upon the... Um, uh, coloring. Because I just saw that it was like a different coloring. So I was like, hmm. Maybe I just used the wrong color brush right now, but no, it's all fine. We're still, uh, we're still back at uh, where we need to be, so that's good. And as you can see, we're working towards our lovely part where we just gonna be creating roots out of, or, well, we're creating the box skin, and the box skin and just needs to have like different ways of in and out, and that's the main idea of the box skin in the first place. The main issue with the box skin is that it needs to have like this. Um, it needs to have like big represent representations, and it does require some kind of issues because I don't want to repeat the repeat the same um, re repeat the same texture all over again, again, again. But I need to repeat certain segments of it. But I don't want to make it so obvious that, you know, it's a texture. That's why I went for, like, variety in the in the, in the the strokes. But probably there will be more variety in there sooner or later. Once I'm done with this part, I will probably do... I do will, will probably do some um, fixing. Because it does create a lot of... Um, it does create a lot of issues. And now we actually need to shut down the... Uh, sketching because otherwise we will get in trouble with that. Yep, we would. That's what we should definitely do this. And now we can see how this part works. So if we now first uh, do this part right here and then get this part right here up and running, that should work like so. Right? Yeah, that will work. That will work. The main issue that uh, maybe I should not have zoomed out this far, but it does create the effect I want. I want to have this uh, tree bark skin, so I should definitely want or go for it. And I'm not supposed to be going for like this meaty looking. No, we don't want this meat on it. We just want sweet ass wood because you know. Technically, this structure I also use to represent uh, muscle mass, which is quite strange to use this for muscle mass in the first place, but I do do it. And uh, I should not have done that, because now it looks might be looking a little bit strange. Because of it. Anyhow, we're working towards getting the um, tree bark skin up and running. Go. So yeah, it's quite fun to see how much stuff is in the background, and it's so always great to know that you know when when you're just working on this, things get better and better all the time. I mean, really, it does. It does get better, and the more we draw of this tree, the better it gets. So I have no problems whatsoever. It's just that I'm a little bit tired. That's all. <laughs> Because, you know, working on something and then, you know, finishing it and then, you know, the aftermatch of it, it's like, yeah, I was not fully prepared on uh, knowing that how tired I was. I didn't realize it. I didn't realize how tired I was from working. Oh, well. But the good news is that, you know, I do, I ju but I did it. I successfully did it, so therefore I should not have been tired that much. But the good news is anyway that this is a 
this is this is getting fine. This this is getting good. This is getting the good vibes up and running. You know, Malfog. The main issue I have with the Malfog is that it's still a little bit of work. But um, once the first tree is done, then the second tree will be less problematic, and then the third tree will be even more or less problematic. So it, it, it all stacks up eventually. So no need to worry about that part. The only thing I need to now worry about is that, you know, I need to get this holding, this whole pot here filled up. And then once that is filled up, I then need to add some more uh, parts to it again. So, how am I gonna do this? Hmm, that's a good one. That's a good question to behold. So, should I then move to doing the coloring first on this part right here? Or should I take the tree fully with me? Mm, I think I will go first for fixing this, uh, fixing the parts that I already have drawn right here. Color it in with one basic color, and then once the basic color is there, then well, we are gonna add the parts that we need. Well, the increase uh, charm of this whole damn uh, tree-looking effect. But to do so, we need, of course, we need some. Uh, Cool old fashioned uh, kind of effects, of course, in this tree. Which is true, we need we need some um, you know, we need some little dots in it that represent the uh, uh destroyed little tree parts that um that break off once the tree gets to bigger heights. So that's the idea. And the idea is then once we're once we have the coloring in, then uh, we can see like, oh well, this part needs a little bit more. Uh, this part needs a little bit more texture. That part needs a little bit more texture to stand out. That's how the whole damn thing works. I think that's how it works. Well, it works in that way anyway. How I think it will work. Of course, you know, when you have that tree. It probably won't last for long. It's it, it's still just a tree, and we need to make sure that this tree does represent the tree that we had before. So therefore, you know, we need to have like these little roots everywhere, these little markings, and we need to get at, and we need to get up and up and up and up. But the main problem is that we need to represent these root carvings that uh, are not. Uh, that are always spreading out all over the tree. That is how this effect works. It create by creating that we create the effect that you know not everything is connected, or well everything is connected towards each other. That that's why. Yeah. Speaking sometimes is really hard, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm trying to do my very best upon getting this thing uh, drawn in. Of course, you know, I might not be the best at it, at it, no, yeah, definitely not, but I'll get it done, I'll get it done. But one thing is for sure, I'm very happy upon how far we already am, uh, how far we already are, eh. English please, uh, I'm already f uh, very not, uh, fine, well, I'm not very, <laughs> I'm very fine, but... <laughs> I'm already very fond on how far I am, or already am, so the satisfaction on this tree is, uh, it's my expectations of it, it's like, yeah it is difficult, yeah it is, it is hard to do, it is, it is some, it does require some um, insight upon where I need to put things, or where I need to place things, but eventually, you know, it will all make sense, so I should not worry too much upon this. Because eventually, you know, the whole tree will make sense anyway. Once it's all connected, and then, you know, once I add some more detail to it, it probably will. But the main issue is that sometimes these, um, that sometimes this texture is a very nasty one to work with because, you know, you need to make sure that everything is a little bit connected, but you're not supposed to. You need to be very wary when you cut things off because you need to have a good consideration why you cut it off. For instance, here, this line right there. 
it represents the it re represents the uh, how the the shape of the tree. But of course, you need to represent that. And sometimes you can't. And that is when you know things are getting a little bit spicy on on the side. All right. Now we have this part right here, and now we can start working on the last part, that is this part right here, that is representing the outer shell of the tree. Ooh, very spooky. And I know, might be very spooky to work with. But, always remind, always remind yourself that, you know, when you're working on these kind of drawings, well, I always remind myself when I work on these drawings that it's not a big deal, really. It's just small things that you need to be in, taking in consideration. It's small, it's small things that make the big thing happen. So as you can see here, for instance, I don't have a right line. I don't have the right linings to represent the parts that I want to go for. So if I want to go for this, I could go follow this stroke right here. That, that That's a decent stroke I can go for. The same goes for this. This is actually quite a good stroke to go and get a representation on it. So get this thing up and running to there and then get this right there straight down. This will create the shape of the tree and then you know you can move onwards again. Now the main thing is that we need to fill this tree. We need to fill all these strokes with again with the same texture. Of course we want to make sure that the texture doesn't feel like forced, so therefore, you know, always start on the outside of it. Because, you know, that's how things work. And after some couple of times, you probably already can see that, yeah, it does create some kind of weird shenanigans when you're working on these trees and then you see like, ah, well, but because I need to connect all of this wood towards each other, sometimes it makes no sense how these are, they are connected. So therefore, you know, I need to always make sure that I'm connecting them correctly. But I don't want to connect them very uh, longly. That's the main problem. Because if I connect them long, so if I make too too long of a connection, it doesn't work. But if I make them too short, then they also don't, don't work. And that's the main issue with the tree, uh, uh, the tree uh, texture that is very hard to do and comprehend or uh, look into because you know it's all, all all it's all the same texture but you need to be re realizing like oh well if i use this right here then well this won't work or this one part this part right here doesn't work so i always should definitely work towards getting this natural feeling of tree the main issue is that you cannot always do that and sometimes you know you're forced into doing the long dreadful placement of, you know, root, rooting, which is right here, for instance. And you can already see that it has some, it does not always look so pretty as it can be, but I'm trying to uh, find ways to do it properly, although, you know, it might not look always the same. For instance, right here, we actually need to uh, lower down the, uh, we need to uh, create a create a very strange hook in because that's how we can get that part that is not representing right here to get that represent uh, to get that hook properly done so now we have this part right here connected to that and then we can move upwards again so as you can see the main issue that we have right now is that we have like a very uh, strict a very strict tree that does uh, have everything connected to each other but we don't want to make sure we don't want to we want to make sure that everything is connected but we don't want to make sure that it's all obvious connected that is the main issue so it's like a little bit of uh, it's like drawing a maze but then you know where the ending is and the beginning is but you need to make sure that every everything with the maze is connected so 
whatever whatever route you follow, you always will end up in the end of the maze instead of being lost. So it's like uh, it's like connecting uh, many things together. That's for sure. So once we are almost done with this whole damn shenanigans, I believe then uh, we can then finally start with the coloring again. And then once we do the coloring again, then we can move upwards towards the part where the tree is again. So that's the main idea. Of course, this main idea might uh, might be a little bit different than you know the idea that uh, other trees will have because you know. We're now use we're now not zooming out. We're actually zoom. Uh, we're actually a, we have a, like a very big tree. That's why this whole damn thing needs to be so damn detailed. If it was a, like a tiny tree, probably it won't it won't have this detail. It won't have this many curves into the bark. It will have some curves, yes, but it won't be that massively detailed or uh, explained because you know you need to have a fading background. Because otherwise it won't make any sense in the background. Like for instance, uh, the trees right there. These trees might have different kind of values on detail than the trees right here. I could draw them in full detail. I, c I probably will do that. And then just use a blur tool to get them a little bit more blurred, blurred out. To represent, you know, the field of view. Of course, that might be a very smart idea, and I think it is a very smart idea because it gives it gives more realistic feeling of a uh, forest, I believe. But yeah, we need to re we need to realize that we are using a field of depth that, um, well, at least that is what we're going to be representing. We have this field of depth that needs to be done, and uh, once all these trees are connected then you know we're gonna have the cool looking effect of a shield well a, fam a, f uh, uh, a family shield or whatever but you know because of the environment how it is placed it's like a portrait but with more roots and trees and all that stuff but yeah it does gotta be feeling like a portrait in the end that's the main idea, that's the idea where I'm looking forward to. Of course, once I'm doing because I'm doing that, it is always very hard for me to be like, ah yes, I need to do it now, or I need to force it right now to get this part it particularly done right there. The main issue is if I do that then well things might not look very good. Now we're gonna look for the part that we need to draw into I probably will go for this part right here and then get this part a little bit downwards like so more tree like less robust more 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 natural so it's like a big car it's like a big chugging into the forest so I have these big roots parts right here and then I can get this part right here up and running so we don't we don't need always to have tiny strokes but we need we need to have some of it we want to represent the effect of you know a tree being very big and very round well not roundish but round yeah roundish roundish by round I mean you know just representing So yeah, and the more I work on this, the better it gets. So I have fully faded it on in the end result. I also can see how fast I work at this because you know I have two screens for this, and uh, I can see like, oh yes, it's already half an hour in. Oh no, the time. Yes, indeed, this takes almost half an hour to do this. Just filling up strokes, filling up texture, yes, true. That is like a very legit time consumption that is necessary to maintain the illusion of, you know, that it is made out of wood. It's made out of digital pixels, but you know, we need to we need to we need to give the feeling of wood. 
we need to sell that towards our customers that are looking at this and be like, yeah, I can, I can, I can relate that that would be wood. I can relate that that's a big giant tree. I can see that. That is like legit. Um, that's legit looking like a tree. There is no need to be like, what could it also be? A giant octopus? No, that could not be. Probably I could make it like a giant octopus made out of a tree, but you you get the point. It needs to be it needs to be believable to uh, sell the uh, sell the immersion of the drawing. That's why you're not supposed to rush this. Absolutely not. Just take your time. Draw the lines that you want to. Draw the lines that you need to, and then continue on hopping towards victory. Slowly getting the part at where you need to be. And then once you, once you're at the part, you know exactly where you need to go. You want to you want to get this tree as good as possible, so you know it represents the trees that are beneath, uh, behind it. It will represent the trees that are in front of it. It re will represent the trees that are in general in the picture. And as long as you keep the consistency with the drawing itself, and if you keep the consistency with the texture itself, then well. You have no problems whatsoever, because consistency makes things believable. If you if you make if you like if you like make a story that's all about teleportation and then suddenly people don't need to teleport te te teleport anymore, then well, the whole make believe of the teleportation is gone because you know people are no longer using it. And if you then don't don't come up with a good a uh, good way of telling the audience like well they are not needing any more of teleportation then well you know you're gonna be in a hard time mainly because well the, the the people are not satisfied upon how it is handled how the teleportation is handled and most likely those people will probably ask you to be like hey could you include teleportation again into your into your story and I would and then you would say like yes I could but then you need to figure out how to do that again and to do so requires a lot of thinking, and that thinking normally takes time. But if you then rush that again, then well, you know you're gonna get very pissed off people, very pissed off. Because you know it's very important that you keep the consistency in your story real. You need to keep the consistency there. You need to keep the consistency in the characters, unless the characters gain a development in their character. But of course, their main character tropes need to be still there. You can have you can have a grumpy old man being a grumpy old man. You can have it, you know, opening up better towards the towards the party that he is working with. But you need to keep it consistent that he is still grumpy, regardless of uh, because it's natural nature. If it is uh, suddenly going from grumpy to go happy go lucky, then well, you know, he probably has swallowed some drugs or something because that's not real. That's not. You know that's not normal for that person. Like you know, you have this, you have this great and gentle giant, and then suddenly the gentle giant becomes very violent all of a sudden without any reasons why. If you would have explained to him that you know he got a little bit pissed off because he got uh, he got raked by a by a fair he 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 played a game with a fairy and he he lost all his goats. Then well you know. The giant could probably go on a rampage, but because he's very intemperate, probably. And if you then explain that properly towards the audience, then yes, they might forgive you for you know giving this trope towards him. But you need to then keep that trope consistent. Every single time he will lose, he will lose his. Well, he will probably go be very angry or very tempted to go on a rampage. You need to keep it consistent. You need to keep that plot hook remembered like if somebody is constantly making fish jokes and then suddenly no more he's gonna be making no fish jokes then well you know he probably um <laughs> drown but yeah you need to keep you need to keep it consistent upon your characters you need to cons uh, and so you also need to be consistent with your drawings if you keep the same art style all the time then yes that's consistency and if you keep the same texture for the art style, you know, for the drawing that you're using, then yes, that's also consistency. You can try multiple things with the art style. You can try to see if it can get better at certain parts, which 
I'm very happy to say that yes, I can do that. Um, but still, you need to make sure that you keep the textures uh, the same as you always do, or at least you know represent that it represents the same textures as it always do. This is why it's always in, this is why it's always important. So now we can just you know get the color up and running and then see if we can get some nice little uh, some nice little parts up. See if we can then get everything up and running. Not on this part, please. Thank you. All right, let's go back here and then just add this part towards it. We're just gonna add the the tree towards it, and you can already see like ah well this part right here maybe that needs to be a little bit of fixing, but some parts here don't need a fix at all because you know they are just this black they just blend in just perfectly. This is why I do this always because you know now I can see like ah well this part needs some this part needs some this part needs some, and then you know I can add that towards the idea. Uh, I can add this so that it looks more clearer. For instance, right here we need, we definitely need some. So I will do that. I will add some more line towards this drawing right here. Right here, I need some more. I need some more here. And you can already see that you know, the more I work on this, the better the better it gets. the 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 consistency on the drawing the amount of strokes I need to do to get from point A to point B. It, it doesn't really matter if if the whole whole damn shenanigans here is uh, getting a little bit out of date or out of use, but the tree itself gains more feeling uh, the more I draw on it. So if I fix the parts that are, you know, blended out or, you know, a little bit blurred, I can increase the effect on the tree. So now I know like, ah oh, well, if I just use this or use that stroke right there, I can now let it stand out. I can now show people that, ah oh, well, this this part right here needs a, this part right here needs a little bit of a, a redo. Well, I can do that. I can just say like, well, I don't need this part right here. And I just can get that part right over there done like so. And then the whole damn thing will be just fine. Of course, you know, not everything here is a little bit drawn very vaguely because apparently I have not pressed the button too much, which is a uh, which is an issue. It's an issue, yes. But you can see, like, well, because I did not press the button because I did not do enough of these strokes, some of the parts here are a little bit blurred out. They they don't represent the tree that we want to have, so therefore, you know, the tree itself is getting a little bit of an issue. And this is why it's always very nice to have, like, the color that you want, the base color on it, so you again can see, like, ah, well, I just need to improve the little strokes right here, and there, and there, and then boom, suddenly the tree part that needs to be fixed is fixed. That's how you do it. The um, the amount of you know strokes that you need for such a tree to be more visible, or well, the texture to be more visible, you can now see like, ah, well, that is a true, that that's decent, that that's a doable, that's a doable part that you need to see. Now, uh, where do we need to be? Where do where does it need to be more visible? Well, if you look at this right here, you can see that there are some. Uh, that I drew here some darker and uh, grittier lines. So what I'm going to be doing here is quite easily, I'm just going to be stroking this a little bit more, I'm just going to give this a little bit more of a color, color shaping so that it is a little bit more clearer where the strokes are and that should be enough to give us the heads of uh, the coloring once we're getting to the color part of it. Because this actually creates already the effects that we need. This uh, this uh, additional stroking on the lines. Because, um, because we drew the lines a little bit more better than before, 
uh, the lines will stand out once we're using the shadowing and the lighting on it so that the lines will represent the strokes on how the whole damn tree is shaped. Whew, uh, let's see. It's 42 minutes. In, it's 40 minutes in. I can start with the coloring or I can take a break right now so that I don't get myself head up into the cloud. What is a smart move? Since that I'm already tired for from yesterday, it's better for me to take a uh, to uh, to quit right now, just to get um um to just to make sure that I'm not tired tomorrow. So that's a good idea, and I think I will keep I will I'll I'll take that. Sorry about then for those who are trying to watch for more than than an hour normally, but yeah. It's a it's a smart move, you know. It's a prevent it's a it's a, it's a preventing move to make sure that I'm not getting fully tired. So uh, yeah. Anyway, as you can see, the the whole the whole tree now it looks already like it looks now like a tree. But once we get to the point where we need to be, so once we get to the point where uh, you know all the uh, shading is coming in, then things will look even better than before. So that's good. I'm gonna just save here, and uh, I hope you and I'm gonna be quitting right now. So I hope you all have enjoyed for today, and uh, thanks all for watching. And I hope I'll see you all next time. Until then, I wish you all a lovely day. Bye. <laughs>